Hello and welcome to the Wisdom Across Time series. In today's video, I interview my grandfather and we talk about the mental health and mental well being issues dealing with men. One in five adults, 58 million people in the United States deal with some sort of serious mental health issue. And those cases, unfortunately, are continuing to increase. One in five youth aged six to 17 also experience some sort of mental health issue. In addition to this, 34% of young adults aged 18 through 34 are dealing with some sort of mental health issue. This is the highest among age range categories in the entire spectrum. My audience is mainly 18 through 34 year olds. So if you're watching this, and you're dealing with some sort of mental health issue. This video is going to speak to you in the interview. We talk about our mental health issues how to deal with them and what to do moving forward when it comes to dealing with mental health issues. So if you wanna bounce around the podcast, I'll put in the description box below the timestamps and you'll have access to jumping around to maybe a topic or a discussion within this podcast that speaks the most to you. I truly hope you guys enjoy this podcast. Let me know if you wanna see other types of content like this on this channel and what topics you would like to see discussed in the future. My sophomore year started as a uh, as, as one of the five starters. Uh, got into a multiple games, maybe a little bit before uh, we had a chance to go into the holiday festival at Madison Square Garden. Coach Mullaney decided not to start me. Mm. And uh, that caused a, I would say was a, was a, a real blow to me for mm -hmm. a lot of reasons. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and really, uh, I guess at this particular time and reflecting on that provided a lot of stress. Mm -hmm. And that stress, uh, you know, obviously was emotional. You can put a, a slash in that and say mental, but it, uh, it bothered me greatly. I was in and out of the starting uh, five for my sophomore year. The disappointment in, in the coach who, uh, who I felt um, didn't provide the kind of input in regards to why I wasn't starting it just became an enormous burden on me. And I reached out to my uncle who had uh, an army uh, vet um, and, and said in a teacher and said, look, I'd like to, I'm thinking about transferring out of here. I just don't feel good about where I am and uh, I just don't feel good physically nor emotionally. So what he said to me made a lot of sense in the sense he said, and it was pretty straightforward. He said, do you want to just be a basketball player or you want to be a student mm. basketball player? And do you want an education? And I said, I want both. And he said, well, look, uh, I, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, so you're getting a good education, continue to work hard on the, on the athletic side. So I did. And that was the first time that I felt that emotional trauma and and reached out uh to a family member to kind of deal with it mm -hmm. i think that helped me i don't know if in fact I, if i didn't have my uncle i probably would have irrationally just said i'm out of here i'm going to connecticut or going somewhere else i did have some other options so outside the inside the family reach was helpful for me this kind of uh, it, this kind of emotional emotional and health issues are at an all-time high from my perspective as i look at the increase in suicides mm -hmm. in the african american community people of color and of course you're seeing now athletes major athletes dealing and speaking out about their own mental health 
The only the tennis player was one of the, the first to do so. Uh, the issues that they have, I was watching the golf today and Marty Fitch was playing against Seth uh, Curry and I didn't realize that he had a major breakdown as a, as a, as a tennis player mm. and uh, had to leave tennis because of the mental challenges he had. It's important. It's not just my vintage, which is, you know, if you look out my vintage and as I looked up and as I can provide and look at the various generations. So you're 25 and so you're generation Z and then look at my generation, which is post-war mm -hmm. and post-war is individuals born between 1925 and 1945. Mm -hmm. And the ages there are anywhere between 78 and 95. That's a major gap mm -hmm. between your generation and my generation. Let me also continue to be very straightforward and candid when in fact, my generation had what is now called emotional or or issues or health issues, uh, particularly black males, uh, we kind of internalized them mm. and didn't seek any help many times, not even within the family and, and absolutely not externally with, you know, the, the appropriate therapist. So uh, it's a major difference. There weren't, as, as far as I know, the issues of us, my generation, dying from suicides. At least I didn't hear about it. I didn't see it in my family, but today I'm seeing it. And you and I talked about a little bit about your own awareness of that. So it's important that your audience, regardless of the age, be aware of their own emotional wellness and health. And it's important if in fact they feel they have issues with such, that they seek uh, help. I, I truly urge as you and I chatted, you know, you told me, well, grandpa, you know, I was able to, to kind of deal with it myself and everybody was busy. So I took it upon myself to, to kind of deal with the issue. And again, it was around athletics, mm -hmm. which I found of, of great interest. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so, you know, and you said, well, I got through it. Yeah, I'm delighted you did, obviously. But that's not to say everyone in your audience can do that. Mm -hmm. So I encourage you to encourage them to reach out, either family or friends or appropriate therapists before it gets uh, unbearable. How did you transition from playing basketball and that being sort of your identity and what you went to college for, and then school sort of being maybe a secondary identity for you? Trans and being equal? And shifting your mindset. Yeah. How, how were you able to overcome that? Because that was such a dramatic change for me because my identity was so wrapped up in sports, in basketball, that it was diff that was like the main reason I went through my depression. Yes. So I was just wondering what you did. Maybe other student athletes that are watching can learn from you. Yeah, um, that that's an excellent observation, and 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 so let me let me provide this. So number one, my uncle I reached out to was the first in our family to go to college. Wow. Okay. All right, and so he spoke from experience and and relevancy in regards to hey man you gotta get, you gotta get educated mm -hmm. it's a it's a tough world out of here for black men it's you know we're talking about getting a job and education is paramount be it a teacher or be it a business be it a doctor or, you know a nurse or whatever so education was important the shift was me understanding and putting both the necessity of getting an education because if I wasn't drafted by an NBA team, 
And even if I was, the addition was I, I got married before I left college. I had Auntie Robin. So it was important for me to understand the reality of life is that, uh, hey man, uh, if you don't make it as a jock, uh, you get, you know, and, and make a little bit of money. And it wasn't a lot of money at that time. I think Lenny Wilkins signed for the St. Louis Hawks for $10,000. And this was, you know, real early in the NBA. Ended up making millions of dollars before he left uh, the NBA. So it was a, a clear understanding and the necessity to put life in, in his proper perspective. Mm -hmm. is that athletics are great. And if you excel at it and make a bit of money, that's fine. But even then you got to, you got to have a job. You got to, you know, be educated on something. Mm -hmm. And so it's important that we understand, be it male or female, the importance of education, particularly today in the environment we live in. Did you even have a mental, um, lapse when it came to switching and shifting your focus or was it kind of just like this has to be done therefore i'm going to be 100 percent a student now and basketball and the dreams of that are now gone and this needs to be handled because i have a family like what was your what was your process with that yeah uh and, and another good question so i reflect on a little bit of high school here okay because uh, fortunately, I was a good student in high school. I was vice president of, of my class. I was most popular you know, guy in the class. I mean, I had all of that, right? So you put all of that into the shift in, in the mental state that I had entering college. I mean, I came uh, highly, uh, I was pretty high on myself, if you will. All right. I mean, he, he, this dude was, he did pretty well in, in high school. I was all state and all American on the one, one particular uh, platform. And, and so I had a lot of self-confidence. That's not always the case, mm -hmm. but that's also provides a downfall. I mean, you know, so you, you, you're this and that in high school and you're not this and that in college. So how do you deal with that? I was fortunate. And I say that, I say that it's so important. First of all, in this particular place, my, my mother and my family, my dad at points, but I'm being very candid, my mother and family, very supportive. While in fact, I got married early and a family early, uh, maybe that was the best thing to happen to me based on what was going on. I, I mean, you know, I'll let you and your audience judge that. Did I have a mental lapse? So I say, no, not a lapse, but a shift hmm. and, and a reality check. But again, you've got to feel good about who you are. Because if you don't feel good about who you are, it's a problem. Yeah. Yep. If you don't feel good about your surroundings, particularly family, it's a problem. Mm -hmm. If you don't have true friends, sincere, straight forward, talking, honest friends to tell you, Hey man, you aren't doing the right thing. Hey lady. I mean, you, you know, you've got to clean up your act. It's a problem. Yep. And, and so my generation doesn't face as, as all of the platforms that you guys, ladies and gentlemen are on. I mean, we, we didn't, uh, I, I didn't have that. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad I didn't. I always say, I mean, there, you can use these platforms to look up more of like the life affirming positive, motivational videos and like podcasts like this where we're talking about like how to overcome different things but what gets pushed out especially if you continue to entertain what is initially pushed out on these platforms is fear anxiety causing reaction videos drama 
the news, World War III breaking out. They love to push that out because they understand that fear is going to get clicks. Thank God I've been able to really like self-internalize lately and block out like all the negative news and just see the news that I really think is important to like what my life is and where I want it to go. But I think a lot of people and a lot of parents don't teach their kids these different things and how to block out the negative in the news and in TikTok and all these social media platforms because they themselves didn't have these platforms. And it's just like they continue to advance these algorithms and these AI systems that's just going to overload you with whatever you continuously watch. Just file in all of these different negative videos relating to that topic to get more views, more clicks, more advertisement money in their pockets. So I just think, yeah, the, the disconnect is definitely a real thing because it's hard to explain. Even like me explaining this to you, it probably doesn't make sense. Oh, it, it, it makes oh, sense. Okay. I, it, it, it really does. And I think COVID-19 brought it home. I, I mean, when you're locked up in the house, and not all of us, uh, and you know, particularly our community, not all of us uh, have homes where you can go to one room or kind of chill out and so forth. How many folks live in apartments? Surroundings, uh, have, you know, can have a, 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 a tremendous impact. And, and COVID-19 was devastating for the black community. I mean, it was devastating for all our communities, but particularly the black communities, people of color, uh, Latinos, you know. And so if in fact the home situation wasn't positive, as you pointed out, and you're looking at the news, which isn't positive, that's, that's a heavy mental load, emotional load. One friend of mine who was the president of a major investment consulting advisory firm. He doesn't have a television in his house. Smart man. Still doesn't. There's a wonderful person I've met uh, recently. Doesn't look at, uh, try not to look at what you consider negative news. And during the pandemic, uh, turned down programs that were positive or funny or enlightening. So I applaud you for that. And that's necessary. And I agree. There's, there's so much negativity out there. Uh, and a lot of us just can't deal with it or don't know how to deal with it. And that's frightening. Mm -hmm. And I applaud you and hopefully your audience for those who can and take your advice in regards to how do I keep as sane as possible? How do I try to keep a positive attitude as long as I can and then internalize it and spread it? And I applaud you for doing that with your podcast. That's so important. As important is again, is one's capability to kind of reach out if in fact things aren't so good, if, let me put it that way. Communication is so important. And the difference between your generation and my generation is education. My father didn't go to school. My mom did, you know, they, they didn't finish high school. I luckily did. Your generation, Generation Z, I mean, you've got so many things being offered. You know, you can do things online. You can go to this, you can go to that college. At, you, they don't have to be Harvard. You got community colleges, you got an online program and the technology. We didn't have all the technology that you, your generation had good and not so good. I understand that. But the thing that you do have, and we have, while in fact, you can communicate in so many medias. When I was growing up, it was predominantly telephone landline mm -hmm. and television and word of mouth. So, you know, grandpa understands the difference and, and applauds and, and appreciates the difference in technology communications between your generation and my generation. But I also know the pitfalls that they, that they provide as you're pointing out. Do you think people, because you said you, you had a lot of self-confidence, you were um, very popular in high school. Was that something that you cultivated or were you born with that? 
I think I think it was something I cultivated. Again, I, I I don't dismiss the environment. My family was a little dysfunctional, and it's and it's just mom and dad kind of together, not together. I'm being very candid, but the family was pretty. You know, the Storani family was pretty tight, and and I just happened to have the personality that that people like, and 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 I liked. <laughs> and 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 it paid off. It, it's something you develop. It's it's if you like people, if you like yourself, and people know that you like yourself and you like others, then good things happen. It doesn't mean they're going to happen immediately, but I was fortunate it happened in high school. How important was your relationship and your upbringing with both of your parents in shaping your mental health and your? Uh, positive outlook on life. My mom and dad, you know, they were together, not together, together, not together. That was traumatic, but I had my grandparents mm. who lived down the street mm. that my mom and I stayed with. So if, if I didn't have my grandparents, I would say it would have been a little quite different, mm. but they were church people, uh, loved, uh, loved my mom, uh, didn't disrespect my dad loved me so i had that loving environment we all need that that's really hard to find nowadays but it's still out there yeah. it is still out there you know you can't dismiss it sometimes you you, you got to develop it and be patient and determined because if you give up that's the easiest thing to do and uh what you and I are doing now and the love and respect we have for each other is based on you wanting to, to know grandpa a little bit more. And that's so important because I want you to know what I, my journey, mm -hmm. and hopefully it's helpful to you and your audience. It's very um, encouraging for me, even like I can't stay positive hundred percent of the time I try to, but this just like, I'm gonna even rewatch this and I'm gonna feel more positive listening to it because this is so special. Not everyone gets to do this. So I thank you for your time and like the opportunity that we have right here on this platform to do this. Here's to your audience, thumbs up. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Any closing <laughs> remarks or we're just gonna end on that? You well, I, the closing remarks are stay positive, stay positive, reach out. Mm. You know, life is short, so make it worthwhile. Mm. Live it as positively as you can.